musicians in bars getting beer. I have Matt. Sam, Hi. And, and Dave. Hi. Yeah. Hi. From Monkey Fighting Snakes. Monkeys Fighting Snakes? Just Monkey. Uh, one Mike. So it might be. Okay. We gotta, th they might be multiple ones. We might as well start right off the bat. What the hell does that mean? Hmm. Okay, well, on, a number of years ago, there was a, a really bad B film um, called Snakes on a Plane with Samuel yes. L. Jackson. And uh, <laughs> the... You know, there's those co those times when they have to dub the movie. They have to they dub in new words because they swear. I can swear in this, right? I don't uh, know. It's sure. Anyhow, well, in any fans. case, uh, there's the classic moment in the movie is when uh, Samuel Jackson looks at the camera and says, "Enough is enough. I've had enough of these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane." And it's like the moment. But when they go to play it on TV. They turned into, enough is enough. I've had enough of these monkey fighting snakes on this Monday to Friday plane. <laughs> and we we're like, what the hell was that? We're like, that's the monkey fighting snakes. That's so ridiculous. I said, that sounds like a rock band. We're, so we're thinking about putting out an album called Monday to Friday playing. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, don't know. I don't know. But in any case, and actually, and by great uh, happenstance, uh, our, a guy that we, we, we toured in Europe, um, last year in England and in Germany and in Holland. One of the bands that we shared that tour with is a band called Black Olives, which is based out of the UK. And our good friend, Andre, uh, from Black Olives actually met Samuel L. Jackson this year. Wow. And he was a, has a picture of him and he told him, he said, hey man, I know this band from Canada that we toured with called Monkey Fight Snakes. And Samuel L. Jackson said, that's awesome, I'm going to Toronto for TIFF. It was just before the... Oh. And uh, but anyhow, we could never find him when he was here. But still, <laughs> it would have been it would have been a, I would have li li liked to have given him a T-shirt or something. Sam, yeah, you know where to find us. Yeah. Anyhow, that's right. um, so yeah, so we're the monkey fighting snakes, and that's where we got our name. When we heard that, we were just like, that's ridiculous. So the initial appeal was that, but after a while, it stuck with me because I was kind of like monkeys fighting snakes, or kind of like evil versus, or no, like. Uh, clowns versus tyranny. I, I thought of like sn snakes are like greed and fucking evil and you know I thought petty and small and monkeys are like clowns so it's kind of like a pie in the face to the establishment that was why it stuck with me I was like monkeys fighting snakes is not a bad thing necessarily so and then we, we have a, t a new tune actually we'll probably maybe be on the second record might be on the third record called uh, some days you be a monkey some days you be a snake because I think it's also sort of a thing that you go through it's internally. Really, I think it has a kind of a, it goes back and forth between a server beat. It's a, it's half sort of blues, hard blues, and half sort of server, server yeah. feel. Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, we're this playing Friday. it Friday, uh, December 18th, which is, uh, I guess, two. not quite two weeks from now. No, um, we're playing at the Duke. Uh, it's a monkey fighting Christmas party. And uh, we did our Christmas party last year at the Horseshoe. Yeah, that's true. Um, this one is, is going to be at the Duke. We are from Leslie. We're from the East End. So right. we're, we're looking for an opportunity to have lots of, of our friends not having to drive that night. That's is great. really what it's, what it's we about. We are at Stratton just right now just to give them a plug. Yeah, well, in and, fact. Uh, and yeah. It's, so that's right down the street from your place. Yeah. That's so right. all, the fans of, all the fans of Dave, he lives right here. So. Yeah, Don't come good. by my house. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to find. Unless I know you. So okay, so that's uh, Friday the 18th. Friday the 18th of December party uh, at the Duke. At the, at the Duke. Duke, there's no cover, and uh, there's going to be special guests. We're doing door prizes. Uh, our drummer Darren, who couldn't be here tonight because of a ballet recital, not his own, but <laughs> could have been, um, uh, is uh, he's giving away. There's going to be some bling giveaways. He is. Oh, he is. Cool. He has stuff. He's so tell me, what else do you have in common with the Duke? The the, the Duke is now hosting a jam on Tuesday nights with uh, Jerome Godbu uh, of the Phantoms fame, and he's an absolutely wonderful hard player. Actually, we had the great fortune of uh, of having Jerome uh, play on a couple of tunes on our debut record. That's great. And uh, I was saying how I, I met Jerome when he first moved to Toronto from Ottawa. He was in a band called Still Waters. And I met him in the market, and there was some, some after hours. Shenanigans? Yeah, it was, I don't know. I don't know if, I can't remember who was the goofs or one of the, anyhow, it was a good, it was a good booze can. It was one of the ones that still had really good live music that would go to like three or four in the morning. And I met Jerome at one of those, and we hit it off, so he's, uh, and I did poster art for the Phantoms for a few years, so we kind of kept in, in touch. That's so great. Yeah. 
Anyway. So, uh, who else do you like playing with? Well, um, I mean, Dave's in your band. Introduce Dave's in my Dave band. We're, a, we're currently a three-piece, uh, although we sometimes have... Me again. There's Dave. Dave <laughs> playing bass. Play Dave bass. also plays button box and uh, sousaphone. sousaphone and trombone. <laughs> really? Yeah. I'm a two player. Is that right? Yeah. Right on. Yeah, I've been playing trombone a lot lately on our on our yeah, tunes. Yeah, there's played, a handful uh, of played a few times that uh, Gigs can play a lot more brass cool. coming up. So that's awesome. Really hoping to integrate the incorporate the sousaphone actually. When yeah. did you start your music? Uh, I started in high school. Yeah. 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 Uh, trombone is really my principal instrument, so I played, you know, every single day. I don't know hours and hours. I was one of those band kids. Really kind of found my found my existence in high school, my identity with those guys. So, so cool. yeah. And then uh, in high school, I played in the you know symphony and the orchestra and all this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, in university, I was in the marching band. I was in the Mustang marching band at Western. So are so, you uh, part of the songwriter? Um, I've got one song. Yes. Yeah. That it's called Sally. Yeah. Uh, I've got another one that's that's coming. Coming yeah. soon? Yeah. So uh, well, tell you me. might have two, and then I it. <laughs> All right, so tell me about your first record. Then. Yeah. Um, we recorded our first record the way that we really wanted. Like, we were we were extraordinarily fortunate. Um, I used to have a recording studio called Umbrella Sound, and one of my partners at Umbrella was a guy named uh, Joe Carvalho. If you don't know Joe, uh, Joe is like, he's just the nicest guy and probably one of the best uh uh, mastery engineers that there is. Um, anyhow, Joa and uh, and some of his pals opened a, a wonderful room uh, called Revolution. Have you been there? Yeah. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah. Well, we we, we had the good fortune of uh, we had a, a producer who really was digging our tunes um, named uh, Michael. Michael Voivoda, Michael Philip Voivoda, uh -huh. and Michael's pretty good. He's won a couple of Junos as a producer. And, you oh, know, he's got some cred, but he was also he's a drummer, and he's. We said to him, <laughs> "Okay, same uh, combo." Fraser from <laughs> Innocent so Guns, <laughs> Innocent Guns, yeah, yeah. was like, just was just saying how he his favorite engineers are drummers. Anyhow, um, um, the gear guys. Yeah, and, and but we wanted to do a record like I've been working as in studios for years and years and I've seen the come and go of all the digital and blah 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 blah. when it came time to do ours we wanted to record live off the floor and we wanted to record to two inch tape so we did like lead vocals I, I play guitar and sing and write most of the songs lead vocals and guitar solos in the take um, and Michael was great that way he really you know well he basically was a little bit of a taskmaster but in the best possible way he wouldn't let us leave the tune until he thought he had three really good takes of it he got our best from us he, he did he got a he got i'm really proud of the record yeah, um and then yeah so we we did it all all you know it could have been done could have been done 40 years ago we recorded through an old neve desk live off the floor to two inch tape and we we actually pressed it to vinyl so We've, we've kept the circles pretty closed. Um, yeah. And that's Finish What You Star uh, by Monkey Fight and Snakes, our first record. Where else do you like playing in town? Uh, we like playing at the Horseshoe. We played there a couple of times. We like playing the Cameron. We've played um, the Linsmore a couple of times. We've played the Linsmore here in the, yeah, in yeah. the East End. We like East playing the East Linsmore. East York Rocks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where else? Uh, we've played a. Uh, the thing is, we've played a lot, sort of more outside of Toronto. Right? Yeah, that's so true. We tend to play two or three shows in the summer in Toronto, but then try to get outside. Last year, we did a European tour, which uh, was yeah. pretty amazing. Wow! And yeah, we played. Um, yeah, so last summer we uh, we were in Frankfurt, we were in uh, London, of course, and then we were up into in North England, and we played in uh, the Netherlands as well. Why don't you so. tell me a, a funny <laughs> story from the road? Then? Oh, oh, oh my oh. God! Can uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> worms. You know, all bands have the funny stories from the roads. So I'm not sure I'm allowed to say. We're there at the bar. We played our show, and uh, it was a lock-in. Right, so it was, this is about two o'clock in the uh, two a.m. Uh, the locals are all still there drinking, and uh, Darren and I are at the bar, and uh, this this lady comes up and she says, "Right, 
Who's gonna take us? Take me upstairs for a shag. <laughs> she was. She, got, she must have been sixty-five. That was the funniest part. Like she, she hobbles in and she's clearly had like way too many. She goes, "Okay, so you guys are gonna take me upstairs for a shag," and we fell on the floor. It was so funny. Not that you know, you know, we were trying to be kind and respectful to her, but we were clearly not interested. Everybody so, has a yes. Um, that. that's right. So yeah, we uh, and we played in uh, Quebec. Yeah. We uh, this summer we did sort of northern, northern Ontario. What are some of the places we played up there? Uh, we played uh, the Levine. So uh, you have a story about North Bay. We have. Uh, well, we were talking about places that we played outside the city. Uh, I, I highly recommend any uh, Toronto bands. It's worth the five-hour drive <laughs> to uh, to go out to play up in in uh, this little town called Levine. It has the Levine Tavern. They actually do a really decent guarantee, honestly, if you're a little band. They do a decent guarantee, and they put you up, and they fed us, wow. because it's in the middle of nowhere. Um, and then when I got there, we were like, you look up on the walls, and you see that it's actually part of one of the sort of older, old school blues circuits. So guys like, you know, uh, Morgan Davis, and Danny Marks, and like, you know, all the, all the, all the you know, the blues guy, Jack DeKaiser, all those blues guys play up there and have side pictures with the owner and like around the thing and, wow. and you realize it's kind of on the way to some other towns up in the north but it's a really it's a happening little bar um, and I played there the first time I played there was with my cousin Astrid uh, Young um, she was touring we were touring a record for her last year with um, Victor De Lorenzo from the Violent Femmes was the producer of that record he was touring with us and uh, so we had Victor and then Astrid who she doesn't like to make a big deal about this at all, but she's yeah, she's Neil Young's for, sister, yeah. Yeah. and uh, and you know she she can totally hold her own. Like she's a great singer songwriter, um, and and she's a joy to play with. Uh, there's my plug for that. So she's right. your cousin. She's also my cousin. It's true. Well, and so how does that happen? Is that through marriage or? You that, no, that's my. You're uh, not related my, to Neil. No, no, no. I, I again, I don't try to make too much of a deal of it as well. Uh, She's okay, actually, to Neil, you're not really. I am. My mom. My okay. mom was born Penny Young. My my grandfather, uh, Bob Young, Robert Young, who's now gone, uh, as as is my mom, um, is Neil's uncle. My mom and Neil were first cousins and actually lived together in the same house for a period of time. You got a pono on you? Uh, you know, <laughs> hey, I printed it to vinyl, Neil. Fuck, I can't do better than that. <laughs> um, well, Mr. Young, if you're out there, uh, I need a sponsor on this show. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we need a sponsor too. <laughs> In any case, uh, <laughs> hey, you might as well get one. Yeah. Neil, we need a sponsor. Come on, Neil, I'll give you 96 kilobytes. <laughs> uh, he didn't want 96. I told him we, we, we had to actually we ended up mastering it, our digital version at 192 24 because he was like, otherwise it's still muddy. <laughs> like, so, um, I, uh, we went last year when he was here uh, to Massive Hall. We saw him in Massive Hall. And uh, he was incredible for sure. And yeah. then because of the family connection, we were able to go backstage and oh, we met nice. him. And uh, of course, we had a copy of our album. So that was a highlight for me. Wow, you know, get to meet him. And we handed our album right to him, which was uh, pretty fantastic. Wow. So, yeah. 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 You never know who you're going to meet on musicians in bars getting beer, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. In any case, it's so. been a, it's been whatever. It, I'm not saying that it's helped in any way, shape, or form. No. Well, you guys are uh, obviously rich and famous. Where's the biggest place you've played? Where is the biggest place I've played? The Our most biggest famous place, place would be the 12 Bar. Yeah, we played the 12, that's true. We played the 12 Bar in London, in London, England's, uh, you know. Uh, so this is uh, many. It's iconic. 